So you might have clocked by now that the new Jumbo Legend 10 isn't made with K-Leather anymore. And you might have some questions. At least I do. And I figured what better way to get an answer to those questions than by calling up one of the key people who worked on the new Legend 10. So, Odie, how are you, man? I'm good, Jay. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I apologize for like being stuck here, but you know, with a kid on the way and all, that's how we do it. But I could not let this chance go to talk to you about the new Legend 10s. So, um, so tell us right away, you know, a leatherless legend. You know, it's a legacy that's been going on since, well, the early 80s, over, of course, 1994, and now it's, <laughs> it's no more. But why? Yes, yes. Well, first of all, obviously, we know that the leather industry is changing, like some other industries are changing, right? So we knew that we, we were going to move away from, from kangaroo leather. And we started having the discussions internally, like, hey, what do we do? We know that the Tiempo legend has always stood for kangaroo leather, so what do we do? And I said, I think we can do something better than kangaroo leather. For decades, we've been talking to athletes and we've been hearing the same things all over again. We've been hearing why they love leather boots, but we've also been hearing what some are the, the cons are of leather boots. So we set ourselves a mission of, exactly with the, after the Tiempo 9 to bring something new um, with, the, with the new engineered leather. Weren't, weren't you a bit afraid when you heard, or like at least a little bit cautious, when you heard that, okay, we're gonna drop leather after so many years, and there will be so many people out there with this emotional connection to leather. There was some caution, but at the same time, when you're at Nike, you know you work on innovation, right? And that's what made us big as a company. I mean, we kind of, you know, break the rules and do things that we've never done before. So I was actually excited to start working on this project. And I took, the, I took it as a challenge and, and a challenge that I would face full on in terms of like moving away and successfully moving away from kangaroo leather. But that's actually a perfect segue to talk about Fly Touch Plus, which is this new synthetic leather that, I, I, you know, I'll be honest, when I heard you were doing a leatherless legend, I thought, oh, okay, oh, let's, let's see. Um, but then I heard about it, one, and then I got it in hand and especially on feed. And I, I, was, I was impressed. I didn't really want to be impressed because, you know, I'm, I'm the old school leather gang. I like my leather boots, right? But I also just have to hold my hands up and say that when I got this on feed, I was impressed. You know, what makes this material so special and what makes it a, a like a legit replacement in your book for kangaroo yes. leather? Yes, that's a great question, Jay. And thanks, thanks first and foremost for the compliments. I'm, that's, I'm happy to hear that. Um, no, we, so we started actually with like what we call a materials brief and we were like, okay, what do, what do people like about leather boots? Why do people love leather? Well, they love the softness, they love the comfort, they love it how it, how it immediately molds to your feet, right? So we were like, okay, these are the key attributes that we need to keep in this new material that we're gonna develop. And then we were like, okay, but what do people not like about, you know, uh, kangaroo leather? It's like overstretching, it gets heavy when it's wet, um, you know, and then as well, like you're not able to do as many like colors and graphics and like fun stuff that you are able to do with synthetics. So we were like, okay, let's marry these two things and let's start working on this material. So that's how we work with one of our material vendors and start kicking off this process into creating this product. And we were like, okay, the softness, the hand feel is gonna be super critical, obviously, because that's what leather purists really love to, to look at first, right? So we started really obsessing that, and from there on out, obviously, we started to continue to build the boot. It's recycled nylon, and then obviously, um, the vendor like worked on a specific like Nike proprietary way of creating like the soft hand feel, um, which was obviously key to that. We do want to replicate, obviously, the benefits of leather, but at the same time, we also want to be honest and transparent about the fact that it's not a leather boot and we want to actually see how we can improve performance beyond what kangaroo leather could do. So we added this rep grip finish, as we call it, which creates actually a better touch. And it's, it's, a, it's a slightly more tacky hand feel than you, the, than you have with kangaroo leather. And that's intentional. How is this different from, from Kangalite that we saw back in the day on, you know, the CTR 360 Maestris? Uh, it was also on the Legend 3s, actually, uh, the, the Elites yes. at one point, uh, T90 lasers and all that. So, so, yeah, it's different in terms of its softness. So, actually, we started measuring softness. 
So okay. there's a way to measure softness, you right? Measure so, softness. <laughs> yes. So this is a very interesting thing. So we we've, we've been obsessing this for for two years. Okay. So um, as we started measuring softness, we started measuring kangaroo leather, and there's always a range, right? Because it's a natural leather. Yeah. Um, and then Kangalite also kind of measures. Um, in a similar type of fashion as, as kangaroo leather. And we were like, hey, let's set the bar higher. Let's see if we can get even softer, mm. right? Without being too soft. We are actually softer than Kangalite has been in the past. Um, but obviously with that package, we, we also want to make sure that it still has like a bit of body to it, if that makes sense. Overall, as we were, as we were measuring it, it is softer. And that's something that obviously we take we take pride in with this new material, and that's different from any any material we've, take, we've done in the past. This temple has not only is it the tenth generation of of the legend, so naturally a bit of a milestone, but it also has the potential to be a, a bigger milestone for Nike because you are moving with this one away from leather, right? Uh, what is the feeling, or you know, are you a bit excited or anxious? You know, uh, nervous to see the reaction uh, from as you said, the purists, like the aficionados out there who just swear by their leather boots. Yes, no, I'm, I'm super confident and happy. Um, I will say obviously along the way, we were like, okay, how will people perceive this? And, and one thing in our process that we do at Nike is we do a lot of testing and we put this in front of athletes, right? And we've done a mixture of our aficionados, our purists, um, and, and giving them these boots. And actually one thing we've done is kind of a blind test. So we gave him a Tiempo 9, blacked out. We gave him the Tiempo Legend 10, blacked out. And we were like, hey, you tell me, what do you think of these different materials? And you know, the vast, vast majority were like, oh, what I feel here on the Tiempo Legend 10, obviously they didn't know back then it was the Tiempo Legend 10, but what I feel on this boot is amazing. I actually prefer this over over what I felt on the, on the kangaroo leather boot. So that gave us a lot of confidence, as well as like having athletes test it on the pitch and getting their feedback was, was insanely overwhelming. And we were like, wow, we were super, super happy with what we were hearing from our athletes. So that's why we are, we are extremely excited to bring this boot, obviously, to, to the larger public. But outside of the, the Fly Touch Plus, we brought Flying It back, as well as the heel counter. So we know how many people get blisters if they try on new boots in the heel. So our mission was to really minimize the amount of blisters. And as you can, can see and feel, is that this heel was extremely soft. So we applied like the U-shape heel counter, which we have also in, in, in one of our other boots, the, the Phantom uh, series as well. Oh, the um, and applied, yeah. yes, yes. And and we we applied that here as well, because obviously it's 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 super soft and, and hopefully, you know, leads to zero distraction. So yeah. regarding the, the sole plate, uh, we know Tiempo is mostly like conical and that's true to its heritage. So we didn't want to mess too much with that. Obviously the newness mostly comes from the upper, but there are really tiny details. If you look at some of these, these medial studs and, and on the lateral side, some of these studs, I mean, compared to the Tiempo Legend 9, there are in the Tiempo Legend 9, they're kind of semi-circles and here they're almost like full circles, right? These are these are not necessarily technology call-outs, but these are just call-outs in terms of like some of the pressure points and actually the comfort that we want to provide by taking a pressure away. Odi, tell me, what was the most difficult part of, of developing, building the Legend 10? Yes, uh, first of all, it was getting the material in the right spot. I think that was that was the most difficult part and we've, we've had highs and lows, right? I think in, in all transparency, we have very high quality standards as well, next to obviously just the, the, the standards that we set for ourselves. So when testing the initial material developments, like it didn't meet our quality and, and durability standards, for example. So that was something we had to work on whilst maintaining that soft hand feel. So that was, that was one, of the, one of the biggest challenge actually, to be honest. Right, what are you most proud of then? I'm, I'm most proud of, out of the overall result, but I think if I need to name one thing, it's indeed like, Going from kangaroo leather to a material that feels and performs like this, for me is is, is the thing that I'm most proud of. Uh, but anyways, guys, um, let's thank Odi for his time and, and explaining in depth what is actually going on behind the scenes uh, inside the Jumbo Legend 10 here. Uh, if you're a little bit skeptic, uh, uh, skeptical like me, 
go out and try it. Honestly, it's a, it's, it's a pretty wildly comfortable uh, boot. And you can, of course, buy it in the link to Unisport right over there. Oldie, thank you so much for your time, mate. Uh, appreciate it, guys out there. Remember to subscribe. Tell us what you think in the comment section. And with those words, we will be signing off. Cheerio.